How's it going? We are back. We now have an official update from Asus, another one. And this seems to be confirming what me and a lot of other people who have stood by my side all said this entire time. That in fact, majority of these SD card issues are heat related. We're going to jump into their statement. But first, I want to thank all of you for subbing, for liking, for commenting especially. I really enjoy the comment section. It's a great place to have public debate. It's a great place to share new ideas, new thoughts, ask questions, get involved, and share your experiences, and especially in the Discord as well. We're all just enthusiasts. We like to tinker. We like to solve problems, basically. Console players, you know, you're used to everything being exactly one way, and there's really no improvement upon it. So it's a whole nother mindset. Whereas you expect things to be exactly what they say they're going to be, and that's it. With a PC, especially gaming PC, bleeding edge hardware, you know, you've got such a high power device and sm such a small form factor, and Windows on top of that, yeah, there's going to be a little tinkering, but we're going to get into that later. So, first of all, we're going to do it live. I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! So, good evening everyone. HQ has released a new statement regarding their work on the Allies SD card reader. We want to thank the community for the passionate responses we've received for the Yarog Ally. Your support has been both immense and invaluable. That's an understatement. It has been a lot of responses, both good and bad. We have been hard at work to improve a number of things after confirming from internal testing under certain thermal stress conditions the SD card reader may malfunction. To alleviate the issue, we will be releasing an update that further fine tunes the default and minimum fan speeds on the device to improve reliability while keeping fan noise in check, as we know this is a concern for many of you. And then it goes on to explain that you can contact them directly or you can RMA your device if you feel so. However, here's my hot take on it. First of all, if this seems like a lot for you to really take in and a little overwhelming, maybe you should return it. But if you're within that window, you know what I mean? If this is your first PC gaming experience, there's a little bit of a learning curve. However, I love this device. As, a, as an enthusiast, I love it. Um, for your average everyday new users into the PC space, it's a lot to take in. It definitely is. I, I feel that. I, I know it. Trust me. <laughs> it, it's a lot. You know, there's a lot you can mess up here. Software issues will make you think you're having hardware issues. And that's why I understand that some people thought that this was a, a driver issue for most of it. There may be other issues going on for, for the most of it. Temperatures, we were right on and I'll explain why in a minute. But lastly, we want to touch on what your options are at the moment. If you RMA it, I don't think they're going to immediately have a permanent fix or a solution. I really am not sure what in mind they're going to have other than maybe replacing one of these SD card readers that are already faulty with another SD card reader. Now, the problem with that is you've got a lot of heat from these MOSFETs right here in the power delivery system. It's trapping in a lot of it. So if you look right here, this is the, it's like a shielding almost, or like a metal type of barrier that's supposed to kind of enclose it, I guess. But that's trapping in a lot of heat from these MOSFETs right here. And as you know, if you're a hardware enthusiast and you like motherboards and you watch a lot of motherboard reviews, especially from like Gamers Nexus or something, you'll know that VRMs and MOSFETs and a lot of those can get up to 100C in, a, in, in some instances. So I wouldn't expect anything different on this device, even though it's using a little less power. Those MOSFETs still have to balance power. They still are pulling in a lot of watts. They're still doing a lot of work and they can get extremely hot. I've read the data sheets on almost all MediaTek memory card readers. And this one right here in particular has a 70C rating. However, that is debatable as we haven't seen confirmation on this exact model, but I did see some false information out there from a similar model, but if you look at the top of his data sheet, 
it said MS Duo, and that's a memory stick duo. That's a Sony memory card reader, and that's completely false. So the readings and attempts on that are not going to be anywhere similar to an SD card reader um, of this stature. The other thing I want to touch on is the thermal measurement that people were using. I've seen meat thermometers. I've seen $20 thermal imaging cameras where people are pointing it at the back of the device and thinking that will give them an accurate reading or they're trying to read the air temperature coming out of the exhaust. None of those are accurate ways to measure something like your MOSFET temperatures or your VRM temperatures or even the corner inside of the memory card reader where most of the heat is. You do have another heat source right here from this heat pipe coming off the APU. That is another point of concern for the heat. The fan curve, however, if you have it set right here, where at 80 degrees Celsius, it's already 100%. That's going to allow that APU to try to stay 80 or under. And it's going to also keep a lot of this stuff happier because it's getting all that hot air that's trapped in here out the device. And that's better. So it doesn't matter what your air temperature is. That has nothing to do with how hot your device is. If your air temperature is X amount of degrees, it has nothing to do with how many degrees it is inside the device if it's moving at a certain rate and just getting it out of there. It's very, very hard to read air temperature anyways, accurately. So with all that said, you know, we were right all along, you know, I think that people who stuck around and shared the same sentiment, you know, you guys are awesome, you guys are OGs. But as we know, SD card issues are nothing new. You know, they've plagued even the Steam Deck, the PSP. Um, you know, you've even seen issues with NVMe drives getting too hot on the PS5 and killing them. You know, there's tons of issues that can happen with flash memory and memory cards in general. Now, here is a solution that Asus could give us. Now, I don't know if they're watching or listening. I actually suspect that they are and they have, but um, if not, it is no big deal. You know, I'm not trying to conspiracy theory out here. I'm just saying it's just weird. So without, without uh, rambling too much, I upgraded mine to a two terabyte SN740 and it is a Western Digital TLC Gen 4. It is fast. It's very, very, very fast. And I only paid 125 bucks for it. You can get a one terabyte on Amazon from different brands like Sabrent and so on for about a hundred bucks. I still think that's a little much if you look at the wholesale price of these things, they're much, much cheaper. Um, so for, for a company like Asus to source thousands of these, you know, you'd be looking at pennies on the dollar with what they, they end up paying for them in bulk. So instead of spending time and money and labor, shipping both ways you're going to be in over your head with the amount of devices that you're going to see coming back for the sd card issues and they're never going to be truly fully resolved in the first place i really think that um asus underestimated how many people would uh run out of space and how many people would desire more space without tinkering and they wanted to go get an sd card slot uh, or an sd card and I think that's bad to rely on these in general because download speeds on Steam, installing games, it's very slow. So if you have one of these and you've downloaded a big 40 gig game on Steam or 100 gig game on Steam, and you're like, man, why is it so slow? This device sucks. No, they're slow on all devices. I can, I can, I can count how many times I see that per day. And I've tested this myself. I've tested with multiple different SD cards. It's just, it's just the way it is. The read and the write speeds, um, are what they are but the problem is when you're downloading a game off steam it's downloading and installing at the same time so the slower your storage the longer it's going to take unfortunately so asus if you're watching just send us a one or two terabyte just send it to us like the amount that it would cost you is going to be in my opinion substantially less and a lot easier especially with the cloud recovery system and how easy it is to swap one of these any user can do it. It's not hard. You know, there's tons of videos out there showing you how to do it. It's very simple. I did one live the other day on my live stream for all you OGs who were watching. Um, I'm still working on editing that, by the way, and trying to compress it because it was like four hour live stream. But anyways, um, this could be a solution that would make people never 
want to even worry about the memory card reader to begin with. So if you advertised all the devices coming out, hey, we're now including a one terabyte NVMe or a two terabyte NVMe. You would not only crush the competition, you would satisfy all of those who were even worrying about the memory card reader. So you're, you're killing two birds, one stone. I think it's a good solution that can make everybody happy. The other solution would be maybe come out with a better revision, maybe relocate it, you know, allow us to send it in and have it totally, you know, reworked or so. But I don't think even that's going to satisfy everyone. And it probably won't put everyone's mind at rest and it won't satisfy the rumors and the misinformation and all the hate. If you really want to get rid of some of the hate, drop us a freebie, drop us like something, giving us something in return for this mishap. It's just like Gamers Nexus had a mishap with one of his mod mats that he has on his store. They realized that the print was off on one of the markings for the power connectors. It just wasn't correct. And he, he thought about it, thought about it. They tried many different solutions to have it reprinted or to erase that part and reprint over it. And they couldn't come up with any solution. So what they did, they offered us some limited edition, like, uh, like little pens and stuff like that, basically as like a, oops, I'm sorry. And then also like a little card. That's the way products should be. You should stand behind your product hundred percent, make sure everyone is 110% happy and you'll earn and keep more customers knowing that you have that a one customer support. You know, another thing I'll touch on is I've seen a lot of people blame BIOS issues. They blame software. They blamed everything but themselves. And I'll watch somebody do a benchmark where they have an active wallpaper engine running in the background, playing essentially a movie in the background or repetitive, you know, gifs and stuff, but they're really high definition movies. Uh, if you get down to it and there's a service running in the background that's using CPU, GPU, and your memory, even if you have it set to pause while you're playing a game, that service itself is still running, waiting to see when you're done playing the game. So it can just start it back again. I've seen that decrease performance about five to 10% in some games, in some instances, it's not worth it. The other thing that I see happen a lot is people using the Xbox game bar or OBS or some type of recording software to record the gameplay footage internally on this device and then represent that as if that's the best you can do on this device or that's what you should expect or that's what they're getting. That's not a clear and accurate representation because I don't know if anyone has ever told you but simply recording your gameplay on the device you're using is going to negatively impact performance by a good bit. For example, Modern Warfare, when I recorded my gameplay footage, I was getting about 20 FPS lower and a lot worse 1% lows. Forza, it was about 10 to 15 FPS lower. It really impacts the system. So what real benchmarkers use, Gamers Nexus once again, if they're benchmarking a GPU or a gaming laptop or whatever, they're not gonna be recording gameplay footage from the device. They're gonna be recording it, capturing the output from the HDMI out using something like a dock. That way they get a clear and accurate representation of what you will see versus what you're seeing kind of secondhand from a recording program that's just no, don't do that. If you're going to be a YouTuber and you're going to benchmark stuff and you're going to complain and blame stuff on BIOS, eliminate all the variables, record using a dock, don't have background wallpaper engine running in the background, don't have like 50 million game launchers. Because look, all these game launchers that have EA, Epic, Battle.net, Steam, GOG, all of those, when I installed them, it was fine, it was all good. I ran my benchmarks and stuff. When I rebooted my system, that's when they all hook back in to reboot. And then you're noticing that you go in a game and it's slower than the last time when you rebooted when you were on that older BIOS because you hadn't rebooted your system. It's insane the amount of people who don't reboot their system often or at all. You know, I've had to remind several people that, hey, after you install a program, you should reboot it. After you install Windows updates, driver updates, all of those, you need to reboot it remeasure your performance again now before you go and blame something you know know what's going on in your system another thing i like to tell people to to, to use is this right here it's this amd overlay 
you know, I've done a video on it before on how to open it up in the AMD software and it tells you how much RAM, how much VRAM, how much CPU, what temperature, it tells you everything. It's way better than the original overlay right here. It has way more information. It's way easier to understand. And it's, it's a nice way to know what's going on inside your device. I also use stuff like hardware info to know if I'm thermal throttling or not. Simple information that any of you can easily get instead of blaming something, you know, oh, this, that, and the others, you know, it caused my device to crash or, or whatever. Or if you're tuning and you're doing a tuning guide and you just click next, 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 because you're in a hurry and you want to rush through it and you skip a step, well, that's on you. That's not really on me at that point. And I've seen people skip the steps that I clearly explain not to skip. I clearly say, hey, read everything before you check that or leave that checked because it could clearly impact your experience. Now, with that said, some people have said that, you know, they've lost functionality of like a uh, game bar or, you know, the uh, screen recording or anything like that. All of my stuff works as intended. I don't have any issues taking screenshots recording doing anything on mine because i clearly didn't leave stuff checked that i clearly said not to and i did a live stream the other day kind of going over that we did this in real time by the way we upgraded my nvme drive on camera so all of you that were in the live that saw this let me know lastly we'll touch on this dock and then we'll head out i don't know if i've mentioned this before but this dock we had an issue with hooked it up to about six different monitors only half of them wanted to work over 60 hertz the other half did we tried you know five or six different hdmi cables that wasn't the issue i've got some that are rated even up to 8k yada yada i've tried a bunch we've even made sure free sync wasn't enabled we tried disabling we've tried every which way it's very picky on monitors tvs it seems to be okay with but if you're going to use this on a gaming monitor just kind of keep in mind that you might have this experience as well the other thing, I don't know if I've touched on this yet before, but I did in the review is that when we were doing the cloud recovery on the dock, we actually had to swap back over to the original power adapter because it didn't think we were plugged into the original power adapter and it would not proceed further while trying to do the cloud recovery. So that was kind of a mess in and of itself. Otherwise, the dock is great. I like it. It does what it says it can do. But the only thing is I would like to be able to get it to display 120 hertz on my daily driver on my monitor but that's not a deal breaker because I'm using a capture card. So I, I, that's not really a huge, huge deal breaker. If I don't stop here, I'm gonna keep on rambling. It's been fun, it's been real. I hope this helps someone. I appreciate everyone who stuck around. I appreciate all the comments. If you'd like help, hit me up in the Discord, join the Rog Ally Discord, you know, DM me, you know, anything, I'm always available. Oh, and in case I don't see you, Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. <laughs>